the world burn, watching the world burn. August 30th, 2024. Let's get into it. Well, I guess that it was open borders that the Democrats wanted are coming back to haunt them. Let's see, blacks are getting displaced from their, from all their jobs and welfare in, in Chicago as the Venezuelan gangs take over. Then in uh, Democrat Colorado, uh, there was a story on X about a bunch of Venezuelan cartel uh, criminals. Uh, I guess they probably were thrown out of the jails. And, and then, of course, uh, the Democrats, uh, Mayorkas brought them across the border, probably gave them... Uh, uh, a credit card and uh, free health care. But anyway, they take over a couple of apartment buildings by force with uh, guns. I wonder where they got those guns, huh? Isn't it amazing how the criminals can get guns? So there are several buildings uh, actually under the same ownership, out-of-state ownership, uh, that have uh, fallen to uh, these Venezuelan gangs. Uh, we're, I'm trying to walk it back and do the, and do the, the investigation as to how the Venice, there's a concentration of Venezuelans uh, uh, in these these three buildings. Uh, um, somebody put them there, and somebody funded it. Uh, whether it's federal government or not, we're trying to find out who uh, these gangs apparently are, are attracted to. Where there's a concentration of of uh, Venezuelan migrants, and so uh, they've in fact have kind of pushed out the property management through intimidation, and then uh, collected the rents. Uh, uh, we have now, um, or have had, uh, it is ongoing uh, uh, operations uh, with uh, uh, a task force of local law enforcement, state uh, uh, law enforcement partners, and, and federal law enforcement partners uh, to root them out. And, and arrests have been made, but these operations are now are still ongoing. With the arrests that have been made, are these confirmed gang-affiliated members? You know, they, um, yeah, they, this is an organized criminal effort, uh, whether it's Trende, Aragua, uh, that remains to be, to be seen. But it do, really doesn't matter. I mean, if they're, if they're you know, Venezuelan yeah. migrants and they're, and they're uh, conducting crime in an organized Understood. manner, they're, they're a problem. So, okay, so you're able to confirm that they, this, this Venezuelan, Venezuelan gang has indeed taken over at least some of the buildings. You're saying at least two of the three. And what I just heard from you is you don't know how they ended up there. And you even made a suggestion that they could have been sent there by, by, like, by federal officials, I heard you suggest. Well, I mean, do you have any reason to believe that to be the case? So here's the, here's the problem. I, I think we're a victim of, of a failed policy at the southern border because uh, what you have, I, Venezuela does not, according to, to my law enforcement, Venezuela does not cooperate with the United States in sharing criminal histories. Um, you've had a third of the country leave. You've had these massive waves of, of migrants coming across the border that, that many of them crossed the border illegally, were arrested, uh, asked for political asylum, uh, were not adequately vetted, were released into the country. Um, the city of Aurora, we did everything we could to, to, to quite frankly, keep them out of, out of the city because it's not our problem. This is a federal problem. This is a problem uh, borne by the federal government. Uh, but what I think, what we're trying to, to find out and what I believe occurred was that Asian, federal agencies worked with some of our local nonprofits uh, and put them there. Um, now, most of these people are very good, good people. Um, but there, there's a criminal element that, from what I understand, what law enforcement is briefing me, that often follows them, uh, intends to exploit them within their own migrant community. And so we believe that that is happening uh, now. Now, it's, we're the 51st largest city in America we're with over 400,000 in population. This is only several apartment complexes. Yeah. But nonetheless, I'm not going to surrender any part of this city to a criminal element. With all due respect, it's no longer, I mean, just in the hands of the feds, when you've got... Uh, we've heard reports that this gang has greenlighted its members to attack your local police. What are you doing about that, Mayor? Well, uh, you know, we're aware of that in the Denver metropolitan area that, that there are uh, elements of Trende Aragua um, here. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we're in terms of how our police operate, the tactics, the, the, what, they're, what they're doing to protect themselves. Uh, is, is, you know, is, is our number one priority. 
And uh, and it was funny, because all these people that were in these apartment buildings, probably all Democrats, <laughs> got, got thrown out on the street. Now, I'm not laughing. I wouldn't want that to happen to anybody, but gosh dang it. Uh, if you vote Democrat, that's what you, you get what you deserve, man. Anyway, uh, but the, uh, the thing I wanted to, another thing I wanted to talk about was, you know, I keep hearing a lot of uh, right-wing hosts or people saying, well, you know, Trump's doing really well. You know, he's going to win. You know, blah, blah, blah. You know, Kamala Harris, she's, uh, she's just a terrible candidate and a terrible person and blah, blah, blah. People understand one thing, and this is, I would encourage, you know, any right-wing host that ever watches one of my videos, the Democrats are the Borg. Okay, if you haven't ever watched Star Trek, the Borg was this, uh, they were assimilated, okay? In other words, the free will was taken away from them. Democrats have no free will. They follow whatever the machine tells them to do. That's who they are. They just, uh, they'll vote They'll vote for a dog. If they put a dog up as a candidate, uh, the dog would be president of the United States. You could put up Satan himself. And if the machine tells a Democrat to vote for Satan, they'll vote for Satan. That's just who Democrats are. They have no free will. They have no brain power in their vacuous minds. And that's what you get, you're up against. Okay, so, so they've already got... 40%, 50% of the vote every single time. Doesn't matter who they run or how bad they are or what happens to the country. They're going to vote Democrat because that's what the machine tells them to do. I mean, think about the blacks. You know, the illegal aliens are displacing blacks all across the country. And yet they're still going to vote Democrat. Understand that. All right. So get it through your thick heads. This election's far from over. Far from over. Well, let's see. Uh, the other thing, I was uh, put up a post because I was trying to figure out, and I've been watching a lot of news on, uh, you know, what's taking place in the Middle East. The good news is for the Christians and the uh, Israeli supporters is now uh, Israel settlers are moving into Gaza, and they're actually uh, moving aside the rubble and uh, rebuilding uh uh, well, they're, they're settling into Gaza, in other words. Now that they've killed all the Palestinians, they're going to settle into Gaza. That's what Democrats want. They want all the Palestinians dead. I don't understand it, but that's, uh, that's what they want. But anyway, so the Israelis are moving into Gaza, and, they, uh, uh, and the Christians are, should be happy because that's more territory for the uh, Israelis to have. Now, the remaining Palestinians that are there... Uh, pretty much Netanyahu came out and, and I guess revealed the plan. Whoever's left alive in Gaza, they're going to try to move them into uh, whatever countries will take the remaining Palestinians as refugees. So that way, Gaza will now become Israeli territory. So we, uh, we displaced or killed 2.1 million, well, I guess you might want them as subhumans. Uh, that's how Christians look at them. At least the Israeli supporters. So that's all done. That's the latest on the... Uh, well, the other thing I want to talk about was the uh, carrier groups. Now, I the post that I put up, and this is my speculation, okay? If I was the Iranians, what would you be doing? If you're going to attack Israel, and you've got two carrier battle groups sitting right there in the Persian Gulf, knowing that it takes millions and millions of dollars for those carrier groups to just sit there day after day. I mean, think about one aircraft carrier. I think, what is it, 5,000 sailors are on that ship, and you gotta feed 5,000 sailors three meals a day. How much, uh, how, much do you th how much food do you think is on that aircraft carrier? All right, now it's a nuclear-powered ship, so fuel's not a problem for the carrier, but for many of the ships in the fleet, that is a problem. You know, if, as they burn their fuel, they're going to run out. Now, it used to be we had uh, refueling ships and restocking ships that would follow along the carrier battle groups, follow along behind them. But as we expanded to 800 military bases worldwide, the U.S. Empire, there was no need 
to have those ships following that was just a it was seen as a, an expense because basically with 800 bases around the world the United States a carrier can put in to ports all over the world and restock well my guess is the Iranians are waiting for those carriers, or at least one battle group, but they're probably they're not going to keep both of them offline. But at least one battle group is eventually going to have to go into port and restock. I mean, imagine the food just just for the carrier alone. Imagine the food that's going to have to be put on that ship. So when it gets into port, plus you know you got repairs, things break all the time. The sailors, you know they. They get restless, you know, they've been out at sea working day after day. You know, sometimes I don't know what their schedule was, but mine during the Iraq war was 12 hours a day. Uh, you know, it, it gets, it wears on you. So what's that, one of the carry battle groups has to go in and restock. You know, it's not a, it's not a trivial thing to restock it. Refueling all those ships, good Lord, think of the amount of, of fuel, the diesel fuel that goes into those ships. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of gallons. So that, that battle group could be in port for, I don't know, let's just say th th a month or two or three. Well, if I was Iran, that's when I would attack. You know, I would just sit here and wait, let the Americans spend their money, keeping those two battle groups right there in the Persian Gulf, knowing that eventually at least one of them's got to go back into port. And then, it, then you're only facing one carrier group uh, with the planes that can come off of one carrier and uh, and then hit, hit, hit Israel at that time. Just saying, that's, that's my theory. I guess we'll see how it plays out. But I say that everything's in Iran's favor at this point to just kind of sit back and wait. And of course, in the meantime, Iran, you know, Russia's still flying in uh, anti-aircraft systems. Uh, they've got the electronic warfare equipment. So from from what I've been reading, they're, they're still setting all that stuff up. You know, it's not, you can't just fly in a Patriot missile battery and overnight get it working and functioning and to, to spec, all right? Think about, okay, let's say, all right, how many veterans watch my show, all right? In order for you to become a Marine, a U.S. Marine, I'm just going to take that as my example. Okay, I had to go to boot camp for three months, all right? Then I came out. For three months after that, I had to go uh, to combat engineer school, all right? And even then, I wouldn't say that I was a proficient combat engineer, but I was a lot better at that than I was at electronic warfare in the Air Force. Uh, that took a lot longer. But then you get out into the fleet, and it might take you another six months to, to get uh, really, really proficient at your job. So we're looking at a whole year. So in order to be able to operate and I'm not saying the Iranians are operating the equipment right now. I'm sure that there's Russians on the ground in Iran operating the equipment, but I'm sure that they, the Russians want the Iranians to take over eventually. So the longer they wait, the more trained up these guys can get on that equipment, and the less and less the Russians have to be on the ground in Iran when the stuff hits the fan. So, plus, you know, they're, they're concentrating on Ukraine right now. Speaking of Ukraine, I don't know if you're following along, Kirsch, good Lord, the latest uh, military defense numbers say that 7,000 Ukrainians are dead uh, in that excursion. There was only 11,000 that came across, so they're mopping up pretty quick that, uh, that nice foray into Russian territory. And then, of course, on the uh, eastern front, man, I don't know if you're seeing it, but every day the Russians are taking a couple of kilometers that whole, uh, that whole eastern front is crumbling at this point. I think we're going to see the war ending in Ukraine a lot sooner than we think, unless, unless the Biden administration polishes off those tactical nukes and starts nuking the Russians in Ukraine. And then, then we're all dead. Just got to say, then, then we're all dead. And that's, a, that's what the warmonger Democrats are. They want us all dead one way or another, whether you're starved to death nuked uh you know fight a war everywhere in the world what was it was it uh, sullivan that was just over in china giving them a lecture on their humanitarian uh and here we are in the united states we got 30 million illegal aliens 
<laughs> coming across the border. We've, we're the biggest drug trafficking and uh, 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 tra human trafficking entity, the U.S. government in the world, and they're going to lecture China on humanitarian issues. Unbelievable. The, the hubris of the Democrats knows no end. All right, let's get into some good news for a change. The uh, Zuckerbucks were not going to be available in the 2024 election. Because Zuckerberg, I, you know, he's, he's cya in man. <laughs> he's, he's covering his ass. But anyway, he came out and he said, you know, maybe that $400 million that I gave to support uh, putting drop boxes all over uh, Georgia and uh, help the Democrat uh, campaign out did help uh, sway the election. You think? <laughs> what, what would you do with $400 million? I think I could live pretty damn good for very, well, the rest of my life. I wouldn't be making these videos. Although, no, I would. I, I just enjoy making these videos. Obviously, I don't make no money anyway. But and, but it does, uh, there's always, I always hope that, you know, if I lose my disability or whatever, because the, the, the stuff hits the fan, which I, hey, that was another topic I wanted to get on. The uh, stock market was up 225 or so points today you know gold's hitting damn near 2600 now uh, silver still hovering below just below $30 I'm telling you silver is the best buy right now if you if you want to pick up some assets but uh, the reason I'm talking about the stock market is that uh, Warren Buffett just sold off a whole bunch of Bank of America stock and uh, I think he's seeing the writing on the wall this commercial real estate bubble is really coming back to hurt the banks. And I think there's going to be even some big banks that are going to be in big time trouble. I mean, there was a huge uh, office building in central Man. I think it was central Manhattan. And it sold for, I don't know how many, back in 2006, it's like 300 and some million. And it just sold for like 18 million. So, and it's uh, because it couldn't be converted into residential uh, accommodations and that was the reason why it went so cheap but the reason is that you know after the democrats locked everybody in their houses during covid nobody wants to make that two-hour commute into work no more they all want to either work from home or or they're finding uh, alternate employment i mean i'll tell you what i mean back when i was in washington dc i was only making at that time poverty wages you know between 25 and 30,000 even back in the 80s that was just a terrible a little bit of money but and sometimes it would take me an hour or two to get to work and an hour or two to get home plus I'd work nine hours a day I mean was it really worth it for 25 30,000 wouldn't I have been better off just to go out and in the in the community that I was in there was a lot of construction going on this was back before I broke my neck wouldn't it be better to just go out and get a construction job and I dare say, with a bit of experience, after about a year of working on a construction job, let's say uh, in carpentry, for example, you know, once you've got that skill set, I could have easily made twenty-five or thirty thousand, and I wouldn't have been in my car four hours a day. So you can see where people are coming from, and plus, a lot of people, they're getting out and they're becoming entrepreneurs. So I just wanted to to give you some some positive news for a change. The other thing was uh, Trump needs to get out there. There's a couple of uh, advertisements. I'm, I'm gonna try to find it. If I find it, it's gonna go on the video right here. Are you or your loved ones suffering from illnesses such as TDS, also known as Trump derangement syndrome? Do you dismiss or deny the current issues facing our country, such as historic inflation, illegal immigration, corporate corruption, World War III escalations, and the chronic disease epidemic? Are you willing to elect someone who was the least popular vice president in modern history and who offers no policy or vision for America simply because your brain keeps telling you anyone but Trump? If so, you might be struggling from TDS. Introducing Independence. Independence allows you the freedom to finally think independently once again. Instead of believing everything you hear from the mainstream media, independence allows for constructive critical thinking. I used to hear people on the news say things like Donald Trump and the movement he has encouraged are a threat to democracy. And I instantly believed it. With independence, I now realize the media is run by the Democrat elite, who are a corrupt oligarchy that censors free speech, silences political opponents, supports forever wars, 
and abandons democracy by anointing its candidates. Independence may not be for everyone. If you enjoy being lied to about your president's cognitive abilities, support Orwellian totalitarianism, or are excited about communist fiscal policy, independence may not be right for you. Common side effects of independence may include an awakening of rational thought, successfully identifying propaganda, freedom of choice, loss of hatred, anti-narcissistic behavior, and love of democracy. I used to blindly hate whoever my party was running against. I didn't care about facts or policy because I was hopelessly indoctrinated. With independence, I'm much more interested in policies that uphold democracy, and I truly care about the health of our country and its citizens. Ask your doctor if independence is right for you and enjoy your freedoms once again. But uh, this was a, it was really, I mean, John F. Kennedy Jr. was really coming out behind Trump. Uh, he says Trump, after the assassination attempt, and he's known him for 30 years, and in fact, John F. Kennedy sued Trump and won. <laughs> so, but he says, you know, they've always been kind of friends, they've just been adversaries. Like I said, you know, Putin can be friends or, you know, I, I, no Putin or Trump can know Putin as an acquaintance, you know, but he's still an adversary. And that's how you treat, you know, keep your enemies close, right? Well, anyway, Kennedy's saying that Trump has admitted. I mean, good God, you know, Trump never admits when he's wrong. I mean, when's he going to come out and say he's going to arrest Fauci? I, would, I just want to hear those words from his mouth. But anyway, he, Kennedy is saying that Trump uh, knows that he had a lot of bad people in his first administration, and he's not gonna make that mistake again. And for example, I just watched a video yesterday of uh, Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, she did a town hall with uh, Trump. Now Trump, you know, he needs to lay off and let people ask their questions in a town hall environment. He was going off with all of his talking points, so I won't say it was perfect, but I was shocked that, uh, I didn't know that Tulsi Gabbard, she, uh, she said, Difficult. I don't know if she's got any kids, but she was trying that um, artificial, uh, you know, what is it called, IVF or whatever, insemination technique to try to get pregnant so that she could have a kid. And anyway, she talked about the difficulty with that, that it was very expensive. It was difficult to find, you know, institutions that provide that uh, service. And uh, she asked Trump, uh, she said, will you... Uh, you know, will, you, will your administration support, you know, this therapy for women so that if they do want to get pregnant, you know, they can they can go through the process because it's 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 not feasible for a lot of women. It's just too damn expensive. And Trump said, yeah, yeah, he's going to support that. So you see how he's coming around on a lot of issues. Abortion, for example. Now, I've seen conflicting reports. One said he was going to vote yes on uh, Amendment 4. One said no. But anyway, on abortion, Trump, I, I don't know if you knew, he's, he's come around on that. He's very, very reasonable. And, you know, the Democrats lie. Oh, he's going to sign paperwork day one, taking abortion rights away from the women. I, I keep repeating myself. I feel like a, a, dead, a dead horse here or whatever. I mean, abortion's available in all 50 states with the pill. Trump has already said... He supports abortion. Not only, he actually came out and said beyond six weeks. I think it's only six weeks here in Florida. He said he doesn't feel that's long enough. So Trump's not taking, he's giving you more abortion rights. He's for it. You understand? And Roe v. Wade getting kicked back to the states actually gave women more access to abortion. So Trump has been a great abortion advocate. If you want to kill that baby, and go to Minnesota. I heard on the news in Minnesota, and I think... It might have been California that even after the baby is born, you can pick up that baby, choke its little head off, and abort it that way. And that's in Minnesota. God, what the hell happened to Minnesota, man? That's supposed to be the Midwest. <laughs> that state, I mean, good God, the, the governor, I, I, I've been watching him. He is one weird dude, man. One weird dude. All right, so that's the, that's the next piece of news I wanted to talk about uh, Let's get on something that might help you out in a certain kind of way. I got this right here. I wanted to show you this because this is the best rechargeable battery. Hopefully it's on the camera right there. This is the envelope. E-N-E, -N -E, in, in a loop. E-N-E-L-O-O-P. You can buy those at Amazon. 
And be sure to buy the big the big quantity of them. Rechargeable batteries, and you can get it with the charger. It's a little white box for recharging the batteries. So every now and then, I, I keep on my to-do list about twice a year. I go around to all my devices that have batteries, and I pull the batteries out, and I test them, and I change them, and I recharge them. That's the beauty of recharging. You know, you're not, you're not buying all new batteries. Good Lord, I priced out some Duracells at, uh, at, at, the, at the warehouse, and they, they wanted $28 for, for a bunch of uh, a double A, uh, you know, 2A batteries. I was like, holy shit. You know, if you buy the, uh, the rechargeable batteries, you could recharge them up to 2,000, uh, 2, 600 times or something like that. So imagine, so that saves you from buying batteries 2,600 times. Now, do they last as long as alkaline batteries in your devices? No, they do not. I will admit that. But it's not by, by a whole lot. Okay, whereas, you know, an alkaline battery in my Walkman might go, I don't know, let's say two months and a rechargeable battery goes a month and a half, you know. So, look, I mean, what different? but then I can recharge the battery. But anyway, by going around and, and getting all the batteries out of the devices, number one, you're preventing them from uh, <laughs> oxidizing in those devices and destroying them. How many times have you opened up a, a compartment on a on something that you hadn't used in a long time and you look at it and you go like, and there's battery acid all, all, all over the inside of it. And then what I also found out is I got rid of a bunch of uh, devices, you know, the stuff that I was taking the batteries out of and I was like, man, you know, I need to just get rid of this. And then there's, there's also the fact that you want... Uh, I, don't, I don't know about you, but I have a bunch of those uh, LED flashlights and a bunch of the headlamps. And uh, so I change the batteries out in those, but they do no good unless you keep them in a place where you can use them, right? So, uh, and then the other thing is I put them in uh, electrostatic bags. If we ever do get an EMP and you have a headlamp, that headlamp is toast. All these LED devices, including your phones, are going to get fried if you don't keep them in electrostatic bags okay and you could go to amazon and buy a bunch of electrostatic bags and, and so when i when i do put a, a headlamp in my car because i keep one in my car i keep uh, I, uh, one in my motorcycle i put one in my uh, bag for when i'm hiking because i have been caught out in the woods where i got lost a couple of times and it got dark on me and i can pull that headlamp out of my uh, walking bag you know and put it on that's a different type of hike I, it's not like me being here at baseline. So I'm just trying to give you a couple of things that you can do around the house to, 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 to anyway, make your life better. Cause there's nothing worse than you're sitting down, you're getting ready to work and the keyboard ain't working <laughs> cause it runs on batteries. And then you're like, damn, where the hell did I put the batteries? And you're like opening up the kitchen drawers. Gosh dang it, I know I had some battery. I mean, this isn't a problem for me because I'm, I'm organized, but I, I'm just telling you there are points in my life where this was true, where I'm looking around going, God dang it. And then you, if you don't have a battery tester, I definitely get you one of those and get you a good one. Okay, you can go. They're only about 60, 80 bucks for the, the top of the line. Okay, and I'm talking about the one that takes actually six batteries to test batteries, but those, uh, you'll, you'll never regret it. Because then you can find out, if, especially if those alkaline batteries are good, just wanted to give you a home project to take care of. The other big story was, uh, boy, I tell you, Elon Musk and Brazil are at war. <laughs> you know, if you didn't know Israel or, or Brazil is, uh, well, they asked Apple and Google to take the X app off of their uh, platforms. And they're, uh, they're suing uh, X, uh, I don't know what for, I guess because of free speech. What, what is it? That, that, I don't understand what uh, Elon has done to Brazil that's so bad that they're coming after X like this, other than they guess they just hate free speech being a totalitarian government. You know, that's that's a leftist government. That's what we'll have in the United States if the Democrats have their way. So uh, I imagine that Elon will have to move to. I don't know where you're going gonna to move to. I mean, maybe, maybe you just buy an island in the Caribbean and uh, go hole up there. Because uh, uh, the, you know the Democrats are going to arrest him if they get in office in this uh, 2024 election. So right now he's persona non grata in Brazil. But anyway, they're, they're going back and forth with lawsuits and all of that stuff. Uh, so that's, a, that's another crazy story. I'll try to, I'll get you some more as I go through my bookmarks here. So this is a... Uh, this is a really cool video. It's a brief clip, 
But this is how you do, uh, you take care of illegal aliens trying to get into your country. This was off the coast of Spain. Let's watch that clip. <laughs> Wasn't that cool? <laughs> Just ran them right over, man. Oh my God, I, that's what we should be doing to the illegal aliens on the coast out there. Maybe not run them over, but uh, we should definitely be uh, sending them back home. Let's just put it that way. Uh, another story I didn't, may not have heard was Hungary is suing the EU for two billion uh, for uh, you know all of their work trying to make Hungary open up its borders to all the illegal aliens, the globalists, you know. And uh, and then of course uh, they'd already fined Hungary. Uh, I think it was 200 million for uh, for not opening their borders to illegal aliens. So I, I what, what's your opinion on that? You think uh, Viktor Orban is in the right, keeping his borders closed and fighting the globalists in the EU that want open borders? Just leave a comment below. So the next video I want you to see. This is Josh Holly skewering uh, Jennifer Granholm. I can't believe. She was a governor of Michigan. Oh my God, and when I was there, I had no idea how bad she was. But anyway, let's watch that video. Before this committee, a year later, after actively misleading to us, after denying and delaying and delaying, and now you won't tell us, was one of them Proterra? No. You sat on the board of directors at Proterra, you made millions, CNN reports and stock options at Proterra, then you, you promoted Proterra stock and Proterra products as energy not. secretary sure, was sure. that one of the sure. stocks that you sold this is so i, I mean really was that one of the really? stocks that you sold? yes no, really no you are presiding over institutionalized corruption in your energy department you have violated the stock act nine separate times you have been referred by the inspector general for violations of the hatch act it is institutionalized corruption that you are now the face of and here's what I'm trying to figure out. I just want to know who really runs the energy department. Is it you or is it the mega corporations whose stock that you own that you're making profits in? Oh, my goodness. Or maybe it's the foreign billionaires who fund your conferences. Let's try something else. Do you know the names of the foreign billionaires who fund the conferences you go to? Since you don't know the stocks, do you know the names of the foreign billionaires? This is unbelievable to me. Uh, Let me help Mr. you. Mr. Chairman. One of them is Hans like Orb Weiss, a Swiss billionaire who has used various dark money front I do groups not know what you to are funnel talking about. various dark money front groups to funnel foreign money into American politics. He has used the Burger Action Fund, $20 million, that then sent money to the Fund for a Better Future, that then sent money to the Climate Power Group that has funded conferences you've attended. Do you know who this is? Do you I think it's a no good idea, idea to that attend is. conferences no by foreign billionaires? About. I have no idea what you're talking You don't know about. the stocks. You don't know the billionaires. You would take no responsibility. Meanwhile, stock. your energy department, executives in your energy department are trading stocks in, in companies that they have direct oversight over, and you were too. Uh, uh, the other piece of news I forgot to tell you about with the Brazil thing is uh, what Elon did, and I think this is a brilliant move, is he's making Starlink available to uh, everyone in Brazil. He said that a, you know, a lot of hospitals and a lot of uh, medical treatment facilities depend on Starlink. So even though he's not going to get paid by the left-wing Brazilian government, he's made that available to the people of Brazil. So I thought that was an interesting piece of news that you might want to know about. So here's another Zuckerberg uh, video that I found for you. And this is him. I, I don't know if you follow Alex Jones. A lot of people don't like him. But he predicted that, uh, that the jab was not going to be a good idea and, and that uh, it was a massive government conspiracy. Well, I think we're, we're learning a lot more now. <laughs> now, <clears throat> now that Elon bought X about that whole situation, let's watch that video of Zuckerberg uh, squealing about how he uh, censored everybody on the jab. All right, well, doctor, I strongly agree uh, that, that we need somewhat of a reset here. You know, as, as someone running a business, um, you know, I, I've, I've said that uh, I believe the best way to improve both public health and economic opportunity in this country is to focus on beating this virus first. And um, I also have to say, I think you, you might be um, 
quite generous in your description of um, of the the government's response here. Um, you know, I was certainly sympathetic early on when when it was clear that uh, there would be some outbreaks, no matter uh, how well we handled this. But you know, now that we're here in July, um, I, I just think that it, it was avoidable, and and it's really disappointing um, that you know we still don't have adequate testing. Uh, that the credibility of our top scientists like yourself um, and the CDC are being undermined. Um, and until recently, uh, that parts of the administration were calling into question whether people should even follow basic best practices like wearing masks. I wanted to get your take on a couple of hot issues. One, this Mark Zucker, Zuckerberg letter where he comes out saying, listen, uh, admitting that the Biden-Harris administration pressured them during COVID-19 to uh, censor, and he used the word censor, COVID-19 content, said the laptop was not uh, disinformation. What do you think of that admission? It's coming. Well, first of all, it, it is what many of us have known all along, and I'm glad he had the courage to come forward uh, and speak the truth, especially right now. And this is really important, Trace, because you have Kamala Harris, who's building her whole campaign around freedom. This is her new mantra that she's she's repeating. She repeated it in her debate, uh, in her speech at the Democratic Convention, that she's going to be a president who champions freedom. But the fact is, as Mark Zuckerberg just exposed, it is Harris and Joe Biden who got him and Facebook to do their dirty work in censoring our right to free speech. Once again, her words do not match her actions. So we got to turn down the volume on whatever it is she's saying and just look at her record, because that tells us the whole story about why we should not allow her in the White House as our president. All right. (laughs) So that was that video. The other thing I wanted to give you some home advice on, and I was, I've was i been doing this not only with the battery project and uh, going through my devices and pulling batteries out, recharging them and everything, was also go through your cupboards. You know, one of the things that I do is I, I look at the expiration date whenever I buy something, canned food mainly, I mean refrigerated stuff, you know, you pretty much know when you put a, a gallon of milk in there that you know, when it goes bad, it's, it's you can look at the date. I mean, hopefully you, you, you drink up all that stuff before it goes bad on you. But anyway, so I, I write the date with the permanent marker on all my cans. And then what I do, like last night, is I go and I pull out the ones that is either expired. You know, that you, you can still use them, you know, maybe a year or two after they expire, as long as they're in a temperature-controlled environment. And I'll pull those out and i put them on the counter in whatever recipe... I'm going to make like my green bean casserole, for example. I'm not a huge green bean fan, but they had expired. So I made a green bean casserole, you know. And that way I've been eating it up. So they didn't go bad. But I, and then, and then, you know, use those things first in your next uh, meal and, you know, cook it. You know, like a friend of mine, you know, he works for a living and, uh, you know, I'll cook and then I'll just nibble on it for the next week or so. Uh, Just trying to give you some advice, so go through. And then, of course, while you're doing that, figure out what you need, right? For my green bean casserole, I realized that I had no canned mushrooms. So I had to go out and buy canned mushrooms, uh, you know, and look at at other stuff. You know, do you have enough soup? Are you a chicken noodle soup fan? Uh, I, as much as I hate to admit it, I like Vienna sausages every now and then. (laughs) So I bought some Vienna sausages. Uh, worst thing in the world for you. I mean, I wouldn't recommend it if you haven't eaten them, but I grew up on them, you know. I grew up on that and potted meat. All right, just wanted to throw out another tip for you and get that Zuckerberg video up. All right, I remember what it was. <laughs> I dang damn it, I can't ever give up. But an F-16 went down in Ukraine. Uh, and then, But that wasn't the biggest piece of news to me. I mean, I, I could definitely have killed the pilot, unfortunately. I'm, I, I don't know why he didn't eject... Uh, you know, those ejection sheets on those planes are pretty damn good. I mean, I, you just hit the eject button when you know you're going down, but maybe he was trying to land it. I, I don't know the details, but the uh, the thing that got me was you, uh, Zelensky fired, the I guess, the chief of Air Force in Ukraine. Um, I, I didn't know they had an Air Force <laughs> left, that is. But, but anyway, so uh, as a result, uh, I well, give Zelensky credit. I mean, he, I've, evidently something was wrong in the Air Force, and... You know, I wish we could fire some of our generals here in the United States, but we never clean up our mess. So you give, give Zelensky credit for that. Oh, dang, God, there was one other piece of news I forgot about. Was uh, And this is just another piece of worldly advice for you. 
So there was an NHL a player, I don't know his name, I haven't seen the tweet, I've just heard about it on the radio, and uh, he was killed, uh, I guess, supposedly by a drunk driver, uh, and I would imagine, you know, I don't know about you, but, you know, if you're going down the road, we, we, they now have these little bicycle lanes that are on the right-hand side of the road, and this isn't the first instance of somebody getting killed riding a bicycle. There was a girl up in Virginia in Lynchburg, and she was killed, she was close friend of my family and uh, anyway I'm telling you don't ride on those bike lanes on the roads if you haven't got a, a trail that's off the road that's specifically for bicycles to ride on don't do it man or unless you're mountain biking you know mountain biking you're back in the woods worst thing that might happen is you run into another bicyclist but I'm telling you it's not safe I used to ride I don't know have you ever ridden with an old person you know my dad he he wasn't drunk or anything, he just, he got to where he just couldn't drive. And quite often he would just weave right over onto that bicycle lane. And I was thinking, man, if somebody was on a bicycle, they'd be dead now. And, you know, my mom, good Lord, she used to do, uh, you know, 60 and a 25. I'd say, mom, you got to slow down. Oh, I didn't know I was going that fast. I'm telling you, old people, and I live in Central Florida, there's a lot of old people here. And they can't drive. That's why I'm the biggest defensive driver. I'm checking my rear view mirror. I'm checking my side view mirrors. If a car comes up close to me, I just change lanes and let them go on by. I mean, I'm telling you, I don't trust anybody. No, But don't ride a bicycle in those little bicycle lanes. We shouldn't even have those. Because if it isn't a drunk person, it's going to be an old person. And you're going to get taken out, man. And somebody hits you with a car on a bicycle, or even a motorcycle for that matter, your odds of surviving are just not good. All right, three more things I'll add to the video and that'll be it. The other one is Zelensky has banned all Christianity in Ukraine. The Democrats are loving that. They're absolutely loving that. So the uh, Ukrainian uh, Orthodox Church, but they had a protest. I saw in an expo, so I don't have it handy for you, but uh, there was like 30,000 people that got together and held a church ceremony in Ukraine. So uh, that, uh, yeah, you know, that ought to make Christians happy. You know, hopefully we can resurrect uh, Christianity in Ukraine now that the uh, the Democrats have banned all Christianity in Ukraine. We'll keep up with that. So the other piece of news, uh, peace out and stay free. All right, there he is. Check out the deer. Hopefully you're getting him on the video. Oh, look, there's two of them. Well, we're gonna, there's three of them. We're just getting a little closer. It's kind of working. There's four of them. Five of them. Holy shit. Now yeah, they're kind of moving off the trail. Maybe we can get them on the video. Hold on. Nice and quiet. to get this guy on the video there are lots and lots of these out today check them out I'll show you that <laughs> 